always been interested in Carol Bove's work. Uh, 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 the first works that I was familiar with are these shelf-based pieces that were notable for including, um, I'm just going to say, uh, a very small keepsakes. Uh, uh, they're very, they're very reliquary like uh, uh, pieces of driftwood. Um, along with books from the period, from the early 70s, uh, spiritual, uh, spiritual self-help, um, uh, so that they were, uh, you know, and this is in 2003, 2004, um, uh, very direct in, in, in referencing um, uh, the period, um, uh, but the work, the large piece that she has in the show, it's called uh, 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 La Traversée Difficile, uh, the difficult crossing, which is named for a work by Magritte, um, which is featured in the piece. So this piece, it's a it's a it's a plinth based, I'm not calling it a plinth based reliquary, um, that harkens back to the shelves that she was doing from several years ago. Um, it features a book, a Rene Magritte, a uh, little monograph on Rene Magritte, uh, open to the page for which the piece is titled. It also features a picture of Gerald Hurd, who uh, was a friend of Aldous Huxley's, uh, uh, quite a prolific writer, was it the five, five ages of man, uh, but very much into uh, uh, the next phase of human evolution would be an expansion of our consciousness. Um, uh, uh, but also very Christian. Um, uh, uh, he's also friends with Christopher Isherwood, so a particular generation of British intellectual thinkers. Um, so there is, and it's quite beautiful in being a very specific piece, but the, 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 the combination, and also on the plinth, uh, there are, uh, there's a piece of driftwood, dangling driftwood, um, uh, a sand dollar, uh, concrete block, a pair of concrete blocks, uh, uh, a couple of rectilinear cutout pieces of paper, gold chain that drapes around and through towards this, this photograph of Gerald Hurd, which is also mounted, I believe, on a piece of uh, driftwood. Uh, and also a uh, piece of coral. Uh, but this piece combines um, two things, and I think this is an extremely, extremely adroit piece. Um, by combining the figure of Gerald Hurd and Rene McCree. Um, it's combining a, I would say, uh, how that spiritual aspirations of the of the late sixties and early seventies. Uh, to what extent do those um, jive with uh, a cultural, uh, an art historical trajectory um, uh, uh, that one could characterize as increasingly bankrupt? Um, so to go from from you know, strategies like the ready-made um, all the way up to uh, minimalism, right? Um, uh, an artwork that would point to the end of art. Right? Now, does that trajectory, in fact, coincide with somebody like Hurd's claims about the next phase of human evolution and expansion of consciousness, right? Where we no longer need artwork, right? We're able to see uh, the beauty in, in natural
natural forms, right? Pieces of coral, right? A uh, 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 found piece of crushed metal. So uh, uh, there's a beautiful um, uh, that that to me is like just right on the, the in terms of the combination of those two. Beautiful, beautiful. So it's a very it's a curated piece on her part. Um, but a curation with a very specific end in mind. Um, and to at the same time think about the languages of surrealism, right? And all uh, the unconscious and then also the expanded, you know, conscious. Uh, so that that would be, uh, and the show opens with that piece in the entryway when you, when you, when you come in. Um, it's very quiet. Well, on one hand, it's, well, it's a very large plinth, so I can't claim that it's quiet. But there isn't an element of introspection about it. So I would say the show opens on a very introspective note before the passage into the works by David Newman. 